Guys, check out all these motorcycles and bicycles. No. Mrs. P.I.B. said, can you believe all that? But check out all these motorcycles. And I'm sure this is a small portion of what Tim Dixon has. Now Sorry. Right here was in June this year of Easy Rider this year. Oh, Last man. Month, it was the centerfold. Oh, man. Check out all this stuff. All you motorcycle guys will get a kick out of all this stuff right here. Man, alive. Like I said, this is a small portion. Tim builds motorcycles. He built this one. He's, he builds motorcycles. And wins a lot of awards, wins a lot of money. But he hasn't taken me out to dinner yet. But maybe the next time. Man, this is awesome. That one over there. Uh... Where's my finger? Right there. It says Gas X Chop Shop. I, Tim built three that or one. Four years ago, I said I'm gonna buy. A bike. I'm gonna build a bike from just junk. I'm gonna eBay junk, junk in my sheds, just damn junk. And it's a '69 model motor. And I took the old guy owed me some money, and I took his old ratty ass Harley in on trade. <laughs> the we put the string on it, put it in the jig, and put the string on it. The front end was three quarters of an inch out of center. Only means of transportation he had for 16 years. Wow. Well, he owed another guy money that owed me money is how it worked out. And he wanted me to come look to Harley and see if I'd take it for part of the money. And I said, yeah, I'll take it. It's a 69. So I took his bike in on part of the money he owed me, brought it home, and seen the frame was whacked up. So I cut the frame apart. And I thought, I had piss on I got another one up here. So I grabbed me another frame, put it in jig. I went up three and raked it. The, the the Trigon CC balls in the junkyard at Seaton's, 90% of the stuff was just eBay garbage or just shit I had laying around. And that old <laughs> tank was a $100 eBay piece. Of course, I made the seat and made the rear fender, and it's still a swing on a bike, but it's a 69 generator shovel. The one says AMF on it. Yeah. But we took it to uh, Daytona that year. The eBay, black one. And that's all I had to ride was that. And me and her rode that chopper. And it's crazy because my seat sits still. Her seat goes up and down with a fender. <laughs> I bet and she was The wore... night before we were coming home, we were headed back to the motel to park the bikes and go down Main Street. And I hit a pothole. We got out measures 11 foot deep and 9 foot across. Oh, my it. goodness. No, it wasn't that big. But it was big. <laughs> It locked my front brake up, however it did it, and she bounced, I mean, completely <laughs> off the damn seat a foot in the air, and when she landed back down, it jarred her head, so it ruined the rest of our stay down there, because it was just one more night, but she was miserable, so we had to pull over, because my front brake was stuck on whatever had happened to it, got out and fixed it. That was cool. That's game changer, that's the one that's won so much money. I told y'all Tim Dixon's very, very talented. And when my truck's is over here, he's tickled to death. Ooh, <laughs> Paying for... Nuts, so <laughs> Paying he for them. sit on his hands to keep him back. <laughs> yeah, she just did the seat on this one. This is my newest one. I bought it down in Miami the other day. Well, it's a nice buy. That's what $75,000 worth of motorcycle looks like. <laughs> oh, my. It's disgusting. It's got an auto wear ride. When you hit 30 miles an hour... It automatically raises up, and then when you hit another speed, whatever you preset it all at, it raises up again. So when you're traveling up the highway and anybody's baby comes out of the car and you have to run over them, it doesn't get them clogged up in there. <laughs> the day the guy bought this thing, he took it to a guy's place that Harley goes to if they have a problem. He is a badass. He completely tore this bike apart. It was a 2019 or 20, I don't even know, CVO. Completely took it apart. Everything on it's been monkeyed with. 150 horsepower. It's one of them in second, third gear. You just crack it and it does wheelies. Crazy sound system, all that. It's got so much crap in it. I don't even know what I was doing. Backup camera. Who needs that? You know what I mean? Who needs a backup camera on a damn motorcycle? <laughs> You're looking back there. 
<laughs> I mean, the guy, the mirrors aren't even glass mirrors. That's a piece but of polished stainless steel. red lights. Yeah, so you just came behind. That's yeah. a piece of polished stainless steel. That's not even a piece of glass. Oh, my goodness. That's insane. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. That's crazy. I've never seen one like this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Here. Got automatic fans that come on. Whenever you're going down the road and it seems it's got temperature sensors. Yeah, I do too. You want ride it? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. I wouldn't. Come on, Reed. I'll take your ride. You can go for a ride, Frida. I'm not going. <laughs> I just happened to, we stopped, we, we, we trailered to Daytona. And I mean, I'm, I'm just saying this. I'm not boasting, but we just, we didn't know for anything. We paid for everything. We just paid our house off paid her property off and I told her I said I, I'll never ever again buy anything and of course we everybody has a house payment I said well we have three houses so that kind of makes it different so I'll never buy nothing else I can't pay cash for so we trailered to Daytona because I usually buy a few motorcycles when I'm down there I bought that one down there the last time we went that 46 knucklehead mm -hmm. and then I bought this one down there for the same guy he had a thousand Harleys about that one. Of course, I'm working on it. But anyway, we we trailered to Daytona, and we were going to ride down to the Keys. So we stopped in Miami to spend the night, and uh, we had a bunch of fans down there wanting to see me, so we hung out with them for a little while. Got up the next day, one of the guys' bikes wouldn't start. And there's a reason why I said we paid our house all that shit off. I wouldn't buy nothing else. I told my wife for a month, I said, if I find a gray CVL on my bike, that'd be the only other thing I want to buy this big ticket stuff, because all this other stuff I don't give a shit about. So we get up, Google Harley store, right around the corner, Harley store, zip in there to get James a battery. We walk in, about eight of them were right there having a sales meeting, and I was on a beautiful bike. I had a new uh, Road Glide, 2012, that had 4,000 miles on it. And I walked in, that was the second bike in the line, and those guys were standing right there having their sales meeting. And I told Angie, I said, oh my God. I said, I don't know nothing about that thing, but by God, if they'd give me a good deal on my bike, I'd buy it. And one of those little guys heard me and jumped, you ever seen that bike? I said, I might be, just depending on what kind of deal one worked out. He said, what are you riding? I said, I got a 2012 Road Glide. Oh man, he said that's kind of old. I said uh, it's got four thousand miles on it. It's a brand. I said you won't find a scratch on that bike. It's perfect. So you're kidding, no? So he goes out and looks at it, and uh, comes back in and talks to the guy and makes me an offer. He offered me exactly what I paid for it. I said no, I won't take that. I said we're in a hurry. Uh, I'm going to give you one shot to do this deal, and I'm going. I said here's what I'll do. I'll give you that bike and this much money, and I'll ride this thing out of here. He walked up to the counter, come back. He said. Pay us, you bought your bike. God dang it. <laughs> so anyway, we took all the shit out of our bike, put it in that bike, and brought it all the way we went. Well, it's beautiful. Since I've got it home, I rode it from that barn to this building. <laughs> That's it. I'm about to set my ass on that seat. <laughs> so how many are in here? I don't know. I'll make a count. Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty for nine, thirty exactly. Thirty. Yeah. And then I got another the building. Tire on that. Another building up there. There's probably ten or twelve in here. I got one up in my other garage with my Corvette, my Bronco. Yeah, I got a problem. <laughs> it's an addiction, Tim. They don't have a program for it. I'm, I've tried. <laughs> the only cure is to buy more money. <laughs> Yeah, it's a clean. I, I know Bay is hard to see. Yeah, that, so that one back in the corner, corner back there. Yeah, it's it's a baby doll. I kept hearing about this motorcycle. A guy told me about it. One fifty five hundred dollars for it. So I said, if you I don't know the blue one. If you look on that, 
copper colored bike. It's got a turbo on it. Cool. <laughs> now, uh, this old guy, old retired Vietnam vet, they, he had hardly any shit in the backyard. So I heard about it through another guy, and then they called me and told me he wanted to sell it. Said he wanted $5,500 for it. I said, what is it? And they called me, and I said, ah, I don't know. I said, I, ain't, look, I don't know anything about it, but tell him I give him $3,500. So there two later got no, he won't take that. I said, well, that's fine. I, I don't need it. I got a couple. So <laughs> we yammered around, yammered around. A few weeks goes by, and my buddy calls me up and said, well, he's ready to sell that bike. If you want to come look at it, here's his number. So I called the old guy up. I said, hey, how about your bike? I want to come look at it. Said, okay. He told me what he knew about it, which wasn't a lot. But we went over and looked at it. And I said, look, I've got two. Let's see. That's a bone stock super glide, one owner. I, it's just got a handful of miles on it. I think it might be 900 or 9,000 on that one. And this is a bone stock super glide, except for a couple of gay ass things they put on there. But that's how you want to buy one of those bikes that ain't been monkey with. The fenders are ugly. The wheels are, they're just ugly. You know what I mean? They're just ugly bikes, but there's not many left that haven't been hacked up. So anyway, I went and looked at his bike. I mean, you could eat off this thing. It's clean as a pen. I said, look, I like your bike and I'm going to buy your motorcycle. I said, but this has been changed, this has been changed, seats been changed, bars been changed, this has been changed, this has been changed. The only value in these bikes is if they've been left alone. I said, but I'm going to buy it. What do you want for it? He yammed around there and he said, well, would you give me $2,200 for it? I said, yeah, I can do that, I guess. So I paid $2,200. <laughs> I'd take $8,000 for it. And that's just what it's worth. It's that nice little bike. Came with just a tote full of damn parts i couldn't believe it oh man that was two weeks later he called me and said hey i got all these extra parts for that bike if you want them i said what I said, yeah. <laughs> that one there in the middle that ugly one it was built in 1968 or 69 now this is a story i was told don't quote me on this it's just a story i was told put in the back of a bar in texas until about 12 or 14 years ago then a guy bought it out of the bar and he sent it off to this cat and had the motor built on it. The guy talked him into putting aftermarket cases in it, which is kind of the value of the motor. So what he was doing is he was just robbing people's cases. But now those cases are better, but they don't have the value. Well, this guy bought it, had the motor built on it and all that stuff, and tried to ride it once and couldn't ride it. So he popped it up on Marketplace one night about midnight in Texas, and I saw it, and I caught him up. So I need to own that motorcycle. I love those little survivors. Two different painters painted it. It's got a cut oh. scheme on this side and one on this side. Yeah. And I did try to find out who these gentlemen are to confirm any of the stories I heard about it. But I got it home. I gave him some money in a car for the bike and the truck he hauled it out here in. I kept the damn truck too. That's the only way we can make the deal work. Which <laughs> I didn't care. So got it home. I sent it to a buddy of mine over in Dayton. He had time to take it with us. I said, look, take this thing. And I want it running and riding when it comes back. And you just, whatever you need, just get it. So he brought it back up to me. God dang, I was tickled to death. I hopped on that thing and I almost made it to where my driveway splits. I turned around, put it back in the barn. I said, you will never see me ride that damn motorcycle again. That is the jankiest, funkiest feeling bike I've ever, just the way the bars are like that. And no, I did I hate it. So It really, looks cool. I, oh, it's cool because it's a survivor. It's a piece of history, you know. If somebody doesn't buy it, I'm going to pull the motor out of it and put it in that 46 or that purple one. They just need a drive frame. That old guy. The, did you build that big bike? I built the blue one. Yeah. I did not build the purple one. And uh, I put a 10 to 1 motor in it. I couldn't kickstart it anymore. And you, the way it's configured, because of that design, you can't put a electric start on it. So I popped that motor off and I built me a 7 in 1 motor so a child can kick it. And I put that hot rod motor in this bike. But I've not had time to put it back together yet. That one, that orange one, thumbed around on eBay or on the marketplace. And there was a state sale popped up. And it, there was a 57 Chevy truck sitting there. That caught my eye. That damn thing was sitting right beside it. The guy had one leg that rode that. How in the hell, break on one side, shifter on the other. He yeah. rode that one leg. But... He was so excited to get it running, he jumped off on it, jumped on it, took off down the damn road, 
forgot to hook his brakes up. <laughs> so he came zooming by the house wide open, hollering. They couldn't figure out what he was saying. And he got slowed down, turned around, come back, and eased into the driveway. He just put it. He said, I forgot to hook my damn brakes up. <laughs> I got it home, and I, I sent it down to another buddy of mine, BT, that used to work for me. And I said, BT, whatever it takes, I bring it back around and ride. I said, if there's three foot of snow on the ground, I'm riding that motorcycle. Two inches of snow, he brought that thing off, and that's the damn road I went. That is the coolest bike to ride you ever seen in life. And it was crazy. I posted it on my gas axe page. Yeah. I bet 600 people contacted me about that bike. They knew that guy that had that motorcycle, and they were begging, begging, begging for me to sell it, but I wouldn't sell it.